Welcome back to this week's episode of The Paper Boat Project. I want to remind you, my friend, that this is not a sailing channel. It's not about a boat. It's about a dream, a passion. That one thing that you still have to do, mine was to buy a boat, to fix it up and to sail it. So what is your paper boat, my friend? This week, dream with me, fix with me and live your paper boat. So what I thought was going to take me about an hour and a half took me a day and a half. This thing was really dirty and man did I work hard now. And that's okay because I think at the end it's going to be all worth it. And I, I just kind of taped off these things because I don't want to spray that as well. I've never worked with a compressor in my life, but I don't want to pay somebody to do it. So I'm just going to like try and if I stuff it up, well, I mean, I'm a little bit anxious to do it, but I'm just gonna like try and do it on a piece of paper. Somebody on the internet just said to me, just try and spray and just have a really fluid arm and just go and do it. And I mean, you don't wanna see yourself in it, but okay, so this is taped off. I'm gonna tape these off and then uh, I'm gonna spray it and I hopefully. I read online that you have to put thinners in the paint and I bought this thinner here not that thinner that thinner and um, this is what it comes out it's an absolute waste it just does not look at that it's like orange on top and it's not mixing I don't know I mean why would the thinner not mix with the paint look at this action that's going on there it's like It's like moving. First, mustard, mustardo, then a day and a half of cleaning, and then this. I feel like this engine is really kicking back hard. having to dig deep to stay positive at this moment in time um, I think the days the long days has just been a little bit too long and you know the workload has been a little bit much but that's what I wanted to do I mean I wanted to come and just put my head in it and I've just been like a rugby scrum just going for it but um I just don't need this right now but I mean I'm looking at the paint and it's just like a I don't know if it's the thinners. I think it's the type of thinners that you buy here. I think I have a solution for the problem. <laughs> Cheers, let's try something else. So I got the PPG thinner that I bought and I mix it with a PPG and it looks much better. So it's definitely the thinner when you come to Dominican Republic. Do not buy this thinner, guys. Hey, Mali. So more, more it's definitely much better, much better. But obviously now that I want to paint it, the electricity's gone off. I thought that we only have load shedding in South Africa, but it's obviously here as well. He's just gonna, he's just showing me how to do this. I've never done this. Okay, and he, I don't speak Spanish, he does speak no English. Okay. So estaba así. Bueno? No? Okay, apparently the machine is not working, or the, the compressor is not working the way it should. And I don't know that. So. So they're trying to get this little thing in there. Correct, so they can show me how to do it. But it's, uh, it's a lot of Spanish talking and I don't really know what's going on. So I'm paying this guy 20 bucks to use his compressor. And this guy just said, hey, the thing is not working correctly. And he's trying to tell that guy that his compressor is not working correctly, I guess. And then showing me what to do. Which is quite an interesting process. Right Bueno? No.
This guy apparently is like the best painter in Lupin. Oh, that's it. So he's. Ah, oh, okay. Now I'm gonna do it. Okay, I did my first coat. What do you think? I don't know if I did good or bad. I honestly do not know. Let me show you close up. For those of you that are paint experts, maybe tell us down below what I did wrong, what I did right. This is the, literally the first time I've ever done this. And that's the first coat. I'm told to do three coats. And I see there, I might have not worked too well on the paint. Maybe I'll um, scrape it off a little bit, but also the second and the third coat will be much thicker. Well, it's a start. And I don't have to pay somebody to do it. And it looks kind of okay. Okay, now that I've done the first coat, I'm just practicing a little bit more. It feels like sometimes when I press it, there's just air coming out and I don't know why and I don't know what I'm doing wrong and I can't ask him because I don't speak English. I have this uh, Google Translate app, which I'm using, but That's as good as it gets. What happened? ¿Qué pasó? La pintura. Okay, so this guy made me buy Tropical. No, yo no. Yes, you! <laughs> yes, you! Isaac. 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 Oh, it's Isaac now. <laughs> and so this morning I got here and it was all bubbled up. I took some photos for you guys, but I didn't have my camera. And so I just power washed all the paint off again and I'm gonna use PPG paint. So from one high to the next low because last night I was so happy about it and now look at what it looks like. I've created double the work for me. Lesson learned, use the right paint. We're still on the paint situation. I went and I got the Caterpillar color um, PPG paint. So the PPG is just, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, just do the right thing. So. I was trying to skimp and it's costing me more money. So um, learned my lesson there once again, you know, trying to do things the easier or the shortcut or the cheaper way sometimes just bites you in the ass. So this is what happened. So, I mean, but also I was um, not going to do this from the beginning, but then I was told by these guys to do it the way that I did it. So I kind of, I mean, I should have known better, but I didn't really know better. So, this guy, Papo, is, um, he's the guy that came to fetch me on the airport and we became real good friends. He doesn't speak literally one word of English. Papo, do you speak English? Papo, do you speak in English? No. <laughs> so, but he's become such a good friend of mine and he said, you know what, I'll just, I'll paint it for you. Poquito. So, uh, no, no, I blow no. So I'm really helpful that I've got really great friends and they're really helping me a lot. They're teaching me how to do this and so let's see how the professionals do it. I tried guys, I really tried. We're putting paint remover on it and then we'll uh, sand it to get everything off now. So what I thought in the beginning was going to be an hour and a half cleaning and then spray it for 15 minutes. It's been now three days, so it's taken much longer than I thought. But uh, this puppy getting some well-deserved attention, and um, from now on, I will be the only one touching it. <laughs> Except if somebody sails with me that's a diesel mechanic, because man, I've worked at this engine. Okay, this is what it looks like. I've prepped it for the second time. I. Uh, Obviously put some tape on the stuff that I don't want to be caterpillar yellow. This time we're making it the real caterpillar yellow from PPG. Not canary yellow, not mustard. The real deal. Day three. Okay. 
So, those of you that know Nigel Calder knows that he's the guy that knows about engines and lots of other things. So, seeing that I have a brand new Caterpillar painted Isuzu 3 cylinder, I'm going to take this book out of my boat and I'm going to really st start studying it. And maybe I can learn even more. So, if I learn anything that's really interesting, I will share it with you guys here and obviously on Patreon. So, watch out for that. this on the channel before the the go see or the selling stones or channel um do you guys know what that thing is called that white thing it's called a crown's iron okay and so that thing that doesn't look that nice is something that i manufactured myself in puerto rico too and um what it does is it holds the dolphin striker which is this guy and the whisker poles which are those guys on the side there see there Okay, and it also holds the forestay and that roller filler. Okay, so that's quite an important piece on the boat. And what happened was I was sailing one day and I tacked over and the top part broke off completely. So I had that re-manufactured actually in Puerto Rico. I did that myself and I actually used a very good paint, but it doesn't look like it kept up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat it with a hammer now, quite hard and see what the state of it is. And if it's not good, I'm gonna have to just make a new one. I couldn't find stainless steel. Uh, I couldn't find brass, obviously. So I just made it out of really, really strong iron. Let's see what happens. Guys, what I've asked the guy to do so I can film it is just um, to give it a couple of whacks. And I'm happy with what I see. Um, he also thinks that it's still fine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep whacking it and just make sure that everything is pretty nice and and still secure and strong. And then I'll just give it some maintenance. So um, take all that old paint off and maybe give it a, a red nose. <laughs> what do you think? Should I paint it red? Guys, the project's going fast, man. I'm up in the morning at six and I go to bed at night at like 11 and 12. But it's fine, we're working hard and um, I have people helping me on the, on, the, on the hard stuff like yesterday I had one guy help me clean the bulges out so him and I was covered in oil. I didn't fill much but like it was lots of oil um, and then today I just had the guys help me to lower the engine or the transmission rather because it's really freaking heavy. So I loosened it this morning, um, I also, uh, what else did I do? Oh, I tested some of the wires inside. I took the stove out. I released that from the hinges. It's a force 10 like you saw, and I had them help me lower it. So yeah, I'm just really basically having people help me with the, with the heavy stuff. And um, it's really nice to be able to have help. In Dominican Republic, you pay $15 for half a day. That's from eight till about 12, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, yeah, 4 euro. And then again, uh, 15 bucks from 2 to 6. So a whole day is $6, ach, $30, where's my brain? And then so what I'm gonna have them do today is they're gonna scrape the bottom of the boat today. There was PPG paint that came onto the boat. Man, is she nice? Ta -da! I'm so happy I'm here. Any guys, <laughs> I love this boat so much. Any case, so we're gonna scrape the bottom of the boat and then we're gonna put one coat of PPG a red because the last time I put PPG on it and they have PPG here and it's the best boat coat or the best uh, bottom paint rather that I think. I mean, I know Interlux and there's some all grip stuff that's also very good, but I've used PPG and I'm quite happy with it. And so I'm gonna give it another red coat. I would have loved to paint the top side, you know, the white bootstrap and the blue and the white, but I just don't have enough money right now. Like everything that's going on, I mean, I'm really, really pinching my sense and really working really hard to get it out of here as soon as possible because it's $60 a month on the mooring ball versus $350 a month where she's standing right now. So that's why I'm working my ass off. And it's fine. I'm not really a scaredy cat, but I'm scared of doing this. So I'm sending someone else up there. Oh, man, this wall looks so much better when it's painted. This needs to just get everything done as quick as possible and uh, get out of here and get sailing again. I've been so I'm a little bit anxious about this rust, yeah.
Okay, day three, and the first coat is on in the build. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode. If you haven't done so already, please smash that subscribe button, hit a like, post a comment, and consider becoming one of my patrons and support my work. Next week, we get our hands really dirty in fixing this beauty that I call Magic Woman. Remember, you're awesome and you can overcome anything you want. See you next time right here.